if you're doing an LS swap or LT swap or any kind of engine swap, this video is for you. You can have a disaster waiting to happen, just like termites in your walls. You can't see it till the damage is done. Today, YouTube, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about the correct wire sizes, the correct grounds for your LS swap or your LT swap. I've been doing this for 30 years and I've seen a lot of people spend thousands of dollars because they skip wiring basics. Your project is just as important. It's my project. Let's get it. This burnt wire right here. Uh, this could have actually cost me a lot of damage repairs, y'all. This could have cost me a lot of money. This wire had got hot and just heated up and decided to burn somewhere uh, in the wiring harness. But what I did is I already tracked it down. It comes here and terminates right down here, y'all. Terminates right here. My first line of business is I'm gonna go ahead and get this sucker up out of here, man. I'm gonna go ahead and replace this wire. Before we actually get into the replacement, I'm gonna show you how to identify exactly what wire size that you need and also the two pieces of information that you need to determine that, y'all. If I don't show you, then we'll probably be doing all of what we're doing today. We'll be doing that all over again because you're not going to have the correct wire gauge. It's going to be too small, and that's what we don't want. I came up with four-gauge wire. Uh, yours might be a little different. You might use two-gauge wire or zero-gauge. It depends on your current setup. Two is I'm going to show you exactly how to figure that out so you don't have the same problem that I had initially. All right, and the first thing you need to know is you need to know that distance. The distance between the alternator and the battery. As I measure the distance from my alternator all the way here, wrapped around here to this junction box, and then from this junction box all the way back to my battery. So that total distance is about seven feet, y'all. The second thing that you need to know is uh, the amount of amps that your alternator puts out. Uh, if you don't know what amps are, don't worry about that right now. But you need to look up the manuf on the manufacturer's website, call the auto parts store. Uh, you need to look up the part number. But the number one thing you need to do is identify how many amps your uh, alternator generates. And in my specific application, uh, my alternator puts out 130 plus amps. Uh, so I got a seven foot run from my alternator to the positive side of the battery. And I got a 130 amp alternator. All right, so let's take a look at this chart. So if you take a look at this chart, you see the numbers on the left side uh, are list the amps that your alternator puts out. And the top section, you'll see wire length. Uh, that's how long the wire is going to be in feet. That's your distance from your alternator to your positive side of the battery. So in order for me to come up with the four gauge wire that I did, my amps is 130 amps, which you can't see on the chart, but it's there. And then uh, my distance is seven feet, which is going to be in between five and ten. So, so if you look at that trend, you can see the red is the four gauge wire. The light blue is six gauge wire. So we just went with four gauge because we felt that that would be the most appropriate size wire considering the wire length versus the amount of amps that the alternator's putting out. Think of it like this, Chevy's R Us family. You just cut five yards and you thirsty and you need an ice cold glass of water. Which one is gonna cool you off quicker? 
You gonna you gonna drink the one that got the little holes, the small amps, or you gonna drink the one that got the the big holes, big amps. This 130 amps. This is 10 amps. What's gonna get you cool quicker? What's gonna satisfy your thirst quicker? The one that can handle the most amps. The bigger wire. This your four gauge wire. This your 10 gauge wire, y'all. Think of amperage as that. All right, what I got right here, y'all, is some four gauge wire. Just gonna strip the uh, tip of it. Strip the tip of it. Make sure this uh, terminal is good enough for the alternator first. Make sure that fit over my little wire that's on the alternator. Yep. Fit over there perfect. Hey y'all, what I'm doing over here. That way I can get this off right here, y'all. Put that on my new alternator wire, the little boot. There you go. Just like that. Twist that thing up real good. Kind of twist that on with it. Well, just like that. Get the crimper. I'll take a hammer, smack that down right there. Put it on the concrete, smack it down, boom. Put a dent in and then crimp it, y'all. Wham, bam. Just like this right here, but wham. I gotta put it on uh, solid ground though, y'all. So. <laughs> Look at that right there, y'all. Boom, there you go. Now that piece right there is gonna slip over the alternator. Just like that. Wham. So, let me go and put that on. I just cut this right here. Take this off, I cut that, take this off. This is the new wire that we made up for it right here, y'all. Put that guy on there like that. Look how that mug sits on there. That's uh, crimped in there, tight and right, y'all. You can pull that off if you try. I used to dab a little bit of solder up in there but I think this is sufficient right here. We'll put that back on there. Put a little, yep, tight. Then you're gonna slide that little rubber piece back down over it, y'all. Boom. Don't get no better than that right there. Now, I got that one end terminated. I'm just gonna walk this on along here and kind of see how much cable I need. Uh, back up in there. I'm gonna cut it about right here. Then I go ahead and route it. Then I terminate this end. What is that? That's a wire terminal. For a car? Whose yeah. phone is that, Papa's? Get out that phone, okay? I thought you, but I thought you was a little boy. I thought you was him. Just walking over there. You better not come Dang. back to this neighborhood. See that like that? Get that right there. Yeah, zoom in. Yeah. Zoom in. That thing just like that. I think that's gonna hurt. Papa, I didn't know you could be a builder. They said a builder. You are a builder. You're using the hammer. Yeah, look at that right there. You see Ooh. how that? Yeah. Yeah. Now I got both ends, y'all. Here you go. There it is. Yeah, Here you go. Thank you, Harmony. Yeah,
The new cable is on the left and the old cable is on the right. It's a big difference. Uh, we got a brown strap right here. We just put a terminal on it. Uh, we actually gonna add this ground strap right here. We're gonna add it on this bolt right here on the fly wall. Gonna put it right there. And then it's a, um, it's a bolt right behind the head. Uh, we're gonna screw it into that bolt right here. This bolt, where's that bolt at? Here you go, right here. This screws in right behind the head, on the head. So we're gonna screw this on there. So let's get that put on. We'll be back in a minute. And this is the engine to the chassis. All right, YouTube. Check it out, check it out. Now y'all can see I drilled that hole in the frame right there. And I tapped me some threads in there and I mounted that ground strap right there. And I just got it mounted right to this little, to the engine block right here. And this is going, it's going to help us out right there. So I added that ground. Uh, let me show you the other ground that I added. And this was a stud poking out on the firewall here. And I just added this ground strap that's connected to it. It's actually got a bolt uh, right behind the head. I know you probably see it right there. Oh, let me back up So mm, There you go. There you go, the bolt right there. That bolt is right there behind the head. And I got the other end of the ground strap connected to it. So, uh, for this is the only ground wire that I had connecting to the chassis of the car right there. That little small wire. So what that means is, is electricity has alternate paths to flow versus that one little bit of connection over there. So we should see improved efficiency and overall uh, of performance, uh, efficiency, and everything, man. It should run better. Uh, you know, take it that we got the proper grounds on here now. So that's a good thing, y'all. All right, YouTube. Uh, now that we got, we got both wires replaced. The alternator wire, as y'all can see, uh, it's no longer there. Put this four gauge there, wire there. Took that little burnt, looked like it was maybe 10 gauge or 12 gauge. So I replaced that with that. You know, that's gonna make a big difference uh, as far as charging and the amount of voltage is concerned. So we had one from the alternator to the distribution block over there. And that's the wire on this side. And then the other wire on the other side is this wire right here running down the side. It actually goes behind the radiator and runs to the positive side of the uh, battery right here, as y'all can see. So uh, we took them two small wires out. It almost caught the fire and we put this thick wire on there. Next video, we actually gonna be uh, redoing the wiring for our fans, man. Uh, you see these little bitty wires right here for our fans? This ain't nothing but like maybe 16 gauge. Uh, if not 16, maybe 14 gauge. And that's way too small for our fans, y'all. Uh, we're gonna increase the wire size we're going to redo the fan wiring, and I'm going to show you how to do the fan wiring for your LS swaps and your LT swaps step by step. Even if you don't know how to do no wiring, we're going to cover the wiring basics, and we're going to make sure you know how to wire up your electronic cooling fan. These are the replacement uh, cables that we got for the fans right here. You know that you y'all see that's a big difference right there, man. Uh, this wire right here versus this wire, yeah, that's a big difference. I know y'all see that difference, man. 
It's a lot more meat on this wire. Uh, that means that, you know, because we got voltage drop on these fans. And so this thicker gauge wire going to prevent us from having voltage drop. And our fans going to turn the speed and pull the amount of air that they need to through the radiator. So look up, look forward to that on the next coming video, y'all. Now, if you made it all the way to this part of the video, I want to congratulate you, man. And thank you, man, because you are now part of the Chevy R Us family. If you found this video to be informative and helpful, hey, please, man, hit that thumbs up button. And don't get out of here, man, before you click that subscribe button as well. And be a blessing to somebody else, man. Share this video. Share this knowledge with somebody else. That way, they being blessed, you blessing me by sharing it, and you being a blessing to somebody else, so God going to bless you at the same time, man. Welcome to the Chevy R Us family. YouTube, YouTube.